Hey, this is Chris and Matt with usgalaxyS3.com. Uh, we have the Sprint version of the Galaxy S3 in front of us. I know I haven't done any videos on this one uh, lately, but uh, starting this week, we'll probably be putting out a lot more. Uh, today, we're going to install Cyogen Mod 10. We're flashing the 824 uh, nightly release because there are possible sound issues with the 825. Uh, in order to get uh, programs like Gmail on it, uh, we've also downloaded the latest uh, zip file of G apps. Of course, this device is rooted and it has a custom recovery on it. Uh, now that we've already placed this, uh, these zip files on the internal memory, we're going to turn it off and boot into our recovery. Well, let's go ahead and let the phone power down from here to get into recovery mode. You just want to press the uh, home button, volume up, and power, just like so, like right here. Once the screen lights up and you see the Samsung logo, just let go. If you did it right, it should boot right into recovery. It takes a few moments. So we'll marinate and let that go. It should pop up right now. There we are. Um, this is just your standard clockwork mod based recovery. Um, you use the volume up and down to navigate through the menus. Um, right now, um, we're going to go ahead and go to install zip from SD card. We've got everything on the internal, so we'll just go ahead and slide down there. Right here, go into the, uh, where is that ROMs folder? It's right down here. So we'll slide all the way down here. Flash the CM10 build. Go here and hit yes. We don't want to say no to it. We want to actually install it. Um, from here, it's going to take uh, anywhere between 30 seconds to 5 minutes to get this taken care of. Uh, you know, we're just going to go ahead and wait that out. You don't want to power off your device or anything while this is happening. You could end up with a brick or, a, you know, something you don't want. Um, so we'll go ahead and wait and wait this thing out, see what's happening. We've already made an Android backup just in case we do run into any issues. Um, you know, that's always a very wise thing to do. Okay, we're done. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to choose it from the internal SD card once again. Going to slide up to the ROMs folder like so. Go back into this, flash the G apps right here. Go back to the yes prompt, tell it we want to do that, and we'll let it go. This should take anywhere between 10 and 10 seconds to a minute. We'll wait it out and let it go. We're gonna factory reset this thing. Just go back right here, want to go back. Gonna go to uh, wipe data factory reset. And yes, we want to delete all the user data. We're coming from, you know, a TouchTwiz based ROM to a CyanogenMod. mod. We don't want to have any issues with a dirty install. So we'll let it go ahead and erase everything, all the user data. I actually have a question for you. When you're installing new ROMs, do you usually wipe the battery stats as well? You know, the battery stats file, I, there's so many myths surrounding it. And I, I don't. I don't believe in it. I don't think that it really does anything, period. You know, there's a file called batterystats.bin, I believe it is, and it's stored in the, the root of the, uh, the device's uh, storage, but I think it, I'm pretty sure it just tracks battery stat statistics, just usage, and, you know, wiping them doesn't really make any difference. You know, the file will regenerate itself and, you know, it'll All start right. doing the same thing. If you were wondering where to uh, wipe it, it's actually in the advanced menu and you can find it right there. If you flash a lot of ROMs, as why I do. Personally, I use Titanium Backup. You could also use Go Backup and pretty much you'll make a uh, copy of the application uh, in its current state completely with all your configuration. Like if you had an email client, you'd have all your uh, accounts already programmed in there and when you restore it on the new ROM, uh, all your accounts would already be configured like they were in the last one. That'll save you a little time. All right, so everything's done here. We've installed CyanogenMod 10. We've installed the Google apps along with it. And we went ahead and factory reset the device as well. We're just going to go ahead and go to reboot system now. Um, this is going to take some time, to say the least. Generally, when you flash a ROM and you do a factory reset, it's going to take anywhere up to five minutes to start, you know, get into the actual usable state. Um, so we'll just wait this out. Um, this is Android 4.1.1. It is... Uh, um, I wouldn't call it a major update. I'd say it's it's a it's a pretty sizable update to Ice Cream Sandwich. The, uh, Google's really worked hard on you know making things uh, smooth to say the least. There's just beautiful transmit transition animations everywhere. The camera's been revamped. Um, there's better messaging UI. 
Um, the new notification interface is just beautiful. Um, if you get a picture mail from somebody, you can actually see the picture straight in the notification. You don't even have to go into the actual application itself. Um, you can actually add a high resolution contact photos now. That was a huge issue with Ice Cream Sandwich. Um, you know, having a blurry photo is not a, a good thing there. Um, they've really worked on making everything more responsive. Jelly Bean is uh, very, very responsive. And here we go. It's uh, up and running, so go ahead and let's get in here. Um, I'm not even going to set up a Google account at this point. Uh, not now. I don't want to make Google. We'll, we'll let that go. I'm not going to name it or anything at this point. Just slide right through here. Get back into the actual uh, Jelly Bean OS. From here, everything is just smooth and fast. This build, um, is this is my second time trying it. I haven't found anything that doesn't work yet. The cameras work. Everything actually works very, very well. Um, I haven't used it for more than a day, so I'm not exactly sure. I haven't had any force closes, lag issues, or anything like that. But this is Android 4.1.1 Jelly Bean, as you can see right here. Um, this device is flashed to Cricut Wireless. It has working data connection. Everything is good to go there. Um, so, with that said, we've got the Google Apps, everything's installed, ready to go, Gmail's here, you know, got the new lock screen and all that good stuff, you know, you slide up, go to Google Now, you can talk to it. What's the weather like? What's the weather like? And, well, we are West Wind East, Jersey Village, Texas, and it's apparently uh, 32 degrees Celsius around here with the... Uh, 20% humidity. Yeah, I'm definitely going to say that's Celsius because it is hot in Houston. <laughs> well, of course it is. <laughs> this uh, device is actually flashed to uh, Cricut Wireless, so um, we, d we didn't even have to reflash the device. Uh, so when you when you boot up, you shouldn't have any issues if you're, uh, if you're running on Sprint as yeah. well. Yeah, if you're on Sprint, everything should work just out of the box. Cricut as well, apparently, you know, our 3G connection's up. Usually it's not. Sometimes you have to, you know, jump through a few hoops to get that configured, but... That with, with this phone, that seems it's not the case at all. Everything's just working, functioning. Like I said, the cameras, cameras work both sides. You know, you've got the front, got the back, so on and so forth. They definitely work. Um, I haven't found anything that hasn't worked yet. The sensors, I believe, work, if I'm correct. Oh, well, we don't want to check launcher. There we go. Yeah, sensors definitely work. Um, other than that, this is a... Yeah, like I said, Android 4.1.1. If you guys aren't familiar with any of the CyanogenMod settings, there's a lot of stuff here that can really, really let you customize your phone to your liking. Um, example, you look down here in the notification drawer, there's a settings to turn Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, the ringer, you can toggle all kinds of things. You can also configure that to however you see fit. You just go in here, you go into the widget buttons, and you can just add whatever you see fit. You want to talk about the brightness, GPS, let's go with LTE, mobile data, orientation. We'll just add a bunch to them, just to, just to show you guys. Um, even the lock screen, that'll do. So, with that said, hit the home button, slide it down, and now there's plenty of toggles. You can scroll through them and do as you see fit with them. Um, so, other than that, there's even more stuff. This uh, is highly configurable. Um, I haven't been through all this. You can turn the font size on. We can configure the power menu. You can add one if you want to take a screenshot. If you guys don't know, you can actually take a screenshot by holding volume down and power in Ice Cream Sandwich. Well, apparently I'm not too good at this at this point. There we go. Yeah, so long story short, you press volume down and power and you hold them for a few seconds and it will actually save a screenshot. Screenshots right here, we can look at it in the notification, pop that up, send it to somebody if we want to. I'm not going to. Um, so, we can turn off the screenshot function now, I don't need that. We can turn the hard, you can mess with the hardware keys, enable custom actions that they can do. You know, if you've long pressed the home key, usually it brings up a recent apps menu. You can set that to open up anything. You know, if you want to open up your email client, you can definitely do that. Um, you can configure your status bar if you want to show AM, PM. I actually like having AM and PM there, so I'll put it there and make it small. Um, battery status, I actually like the percentage, so I'm going to switch it over there. Um, you know, the signal, I'd rather leave it as it is. You can actually 
show the notification count of uh, pending notifications that are coming in. Um, configure the wallpaper, but you can do that anywhere, apparently. Um, Sajamon supports the theme engine. We don't have any themes installed on this device, but you can just get on the market or the Play Store, whatever you want to call it. Search for CM9, CM10 themes, and they should just work without issue. You can configure your lock screen. You can use face unlock, you know, whatever you need to do there. Um, you can have it display the owner information on the device on your lock screen, just in case you lose your phone. You know, somebody might be able to contact you and get it back to you. You can have the weather displayed there. You can have your calendar events pop up on there. Really, really useful things here. I'm not sure what the launcher settings are, but I'm guessing. Okay, just basic, basic settings for the launcher, if I'm correct. Um, yeah, that looks about it. You can come in here, you can turn the search bar on and off, you can resize widgets, you know, anything there. Configure the grid size. I know some people like to go 5x5. Five five. I personally leave it as it is. Um, I really don't configure things too much. Um, so with that said, these, these settings right here are definitely, definitely very, very useful. Um, I'm not sure what this profiles is. I believe it's something new to Science and Mod. I've never used them personally. Um, I'm not really sure how to configure those or set those up, but in short, you know, I guess you can have settings, you know, different settings if you want to uh, have night settings, turn your volume real low, make the screen real dim, you know, don't want to hurt your eyes, so on and so forth. You can have silent mode, you can have work mode, things like that. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and disable that. So, with that said, this is a Cyanogen Mod 10 on the uh, Sprint Galaxy S3. This is the nightly build from August 24th. It's working very, very well at this point. Basically, uh, in a couple days, we'll probably do a, a wrap-up after we've actually used this phone uh, kind of like a, a as a daily use phone and uh, been able to experience uh, everything on it, uh, receive calls, send calls, text messages, etc. We'll do a wrap, probably a wrap-up video, and we'll kind of compare it to the uh, SOC version side-by-side uh, -side with an AT&T uh, Galaxy S3. So... Like this video, it helps us out a lot, encourages us to make uh, more videos. Subscribe to this YouTube channel, and that's about it. Thanks a lot.